Health and environmental concerns continue to mount throughout the American heartland this week after government and railroad officials intentionally released thousands of pounds of vinyl chloride, a known carcinogen, into the atmosphere. Last week's dump and burned control release took place in five tanker cars damaged as a result of a 50-car Norfolk Southern freight train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, earlier this month. Now we're learning three more dangerous chemicals have been leaked as part of that derailment. Here's what one hazardous material specialist told local station WKBN 27 yesterday. We basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency sent a letter to Norfolk Southern stating that ethylene glycol monobutyl ether, ethylexyl acrylate, and isobutylene were also in the rail cars that were derailed, breached, or on fire. Caggiano says ethylexyl acrylate is especially worrisome. He says it's a carcinogen, and contact with it can cause burning and irritation in the skin and eyes. Breathing it in can irritate the nose, throat, and cause coughing and shortness of breath. Isobutylene is also known to cause dizziness and drowsiness when inhaled. I was kind of surprised that when they quickly told the people they can go back home, but then said if they feel like they want their, uh, their homes tested, uh, they can have them tested. I, I would have far rather they did all the testing. Joining us now to weigh in is News Nation Washington Bureau Chief Mike Vaccara. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be here, Robbie. So what are we learning about uh, the situation on the ground? Obviously, I think there's a lot of understandable concern from the people. Right. And uh, I think many of them feel like this is not being treated with the absolute seriousness it requires. Well, I think it beggars belief when you look at those astonishing pictures from that burn off that happened earlier last week, uh, that there could be a safe environment for people to return to their homes. You know. Uh, you talked about the three chemicals that the EPA revealed late in this process just a couple of days ago that were also on that train. Uh, but the principal concern initially was vinyl chloride, which causes liver cancer, which is the principal cause of all that burn off and that enormous toxic cloud that we saw rising over that community of East Palestine in Ohio, just over the Pennsylvania border, about 40 miles west of uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, so a lot of concern to the extent now that local residents have called on local officials to get together and answer some of these questions. Uh, there's a town hall scheduled there in East Palestine at the high school gymnasium for tomorrow night. In the meantime, again, hard to believe the EPA says there are no levels of concern in the air uh, in terms of any particulate, any carcinogens that might still be floating around. The fallout from this, uh, the literal fallout and now the political fallout, uh, stretching here to Washington as the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, is under a great deal of fire for not paying what many believe to be insufficient attention to this situation here. Uh, so the EPA still looking at homes, still concerns concerns about well water. There is an NTSB, National Tra Transportation Safety Board, investigation uh, going on right now, but still a lot of unanswered questions, Brianna and Robbie. Yeah, I think your point about there being such a delay in the response from the Biden administration and Pete Buttigieg in particular has been a real focus in the story here, especially as the news seems to be very transfixed on the Chinese balloons uh, and not at all seem to be wanting to dedicate much time to this ongoing environmental crisis. You mentioned that the EPA has said that apparently there was no air risk uh, or not identified an air risk at this time. But uh, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources has reported thousands of fish uh, dead of, of approximately right. 7.5 miles away. Um, so it, it seems unlikely that there is not going to be a far-reaching environmental consequence and human consequences for these kinds of things. Moreover, folks like uh, David Sirota over at The Lever have been reporting about uh, the choices that were made that could have perhaps prevented an accident like this. Rail companies apparently blocked safety rules in advance of the Ohio, uh, the Ohio derailment. They convinced government officials to repeal break rules and corporate lobbyists water, watered down hazmat safety regulations that, again, could have created more regulations for carrying hazardous materials that got ratcheted back and were only applied to carrying petroleum and those kinds of things. And I wonder what you make of the conversation around what could have been done. Even the guest um, in the clip that we, the, the inter guy interviewed in the clip that we just played, seemed to indicate that the choice to kind of blow out uh, this giant plume instead of containing the crash and these chemicals in another way seemed to be geared toward getting the rail, the, 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 the railway cars open again, getting the um, rail tracks rather open again and so that commerce could commence. What, what, what do you make of some of these um, 
kind of economic priorities that seem to have played a role in this? Well, initially, the, the reasoning behind the burn-off and the release of the, the vinyl chloride was because uh, it was such a volatile substance and it was just laying there on the ground. Yeah, the, you know, it's not just Dave Sirota. It's uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar from Minnesota calling on Pete Buttigieg uh, to do more, to pay more attention to this. A lot of people seeing undertones of class uh, uh, apathy because these folks are, this is a working class community in eastern Ohio. That's on the left, on the right. Uh, people are blaming the administration for not caring uh, just on the basis of electoral politics because that area, that particular county, uh, Columbiana County in eastern Ohio, voted, I think, 45 percent in favor of Donald Trump. So uh, po politics is inevitably going to be a part of all this. Now, in terms of the, the responsibility of Norfolk Southern, uh, there are calls for them to be liable for the cleanup. It beggars belief, again, uh, that they wouldn't be on the hook uh, for cleaning up this mess. Uh, that was largely their responsibility. And I'm not sure if you saw the video that was uh, found just yesterday by a Pittsburgh station and, and aired. The One of the tanker cars that carries a flammable or a hazardous substance was literally on fire from underneath as it drove through a town uh, on its way to East Palestine, where it ultimately uh, crashed and was derailed. Uh, so a lot of unanswered questions, no question about it. Who's going to pay for medical screening? Should it be Norfolk Southern? Who's going to pay in the long term? Obviously, the, the litigation that's going to stem from this is going to stretch out over months, if not years, uh, but many unanswered questions and a lot that the Department of Transportation and local officials have to answer for. Hmm. As you mentioned, Bree, now even as residents living around the, the derailment area are reporting dead fish, dead animals, the Biden administration continues to maintain there's no problem with air and water quality in the area. After a week of silence on the issue, Secretary Pete Buttigieg tweeted yesterday, I continue to be concerned about the impacts of the February 3rd train derailment near East Palestine, Ohio, and the effects on families in the 10 days since their lives were upended through no fault of their own. He continued, EPA has screened 291 homes and no detections were identified and 181 homes remained. Maine. So his statement comes only after the former mayor was slammed online for his action or lack thereof. Here he is yesterday mentioning the spy balloons. It's had its challenges. Right. Uh, I mean, if you look at what the American transportation systems have faced in the last two or three years, partly because of the pandemic, we've faced issues from container shipping to airline cancellations. Mm -hmm. Now we got balloons. That's right. Um. <laughs> yeah, and that, that speaks to, I think, the fact that the balloons story, you know, was covered r relentlessly in a, in a lot of media spaces, you know, day after day, what was it, the weekend before last, day after day of in the, the Chinese spy balloon saga. Uh, you know, this is just those images are so startling that people have real concerns. They're noticing dead animals. And, uh, you know, I know News Nation has been on top of this. Uh, there has, of course, been, you know, other coverage elsewhere in the media. But I think it's not maybe as all consuming as the attention to the spy balloon, which is what uh, people were mocking when they hear, you know, uh, Secretary Pete mention that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think there's an element of gotcha to um, that clip and the, the offhand joke that he made. But what's what I think is a serious concern is uh, a relative lack of attention uh, to what is most obviously a, an environmental catastrophe uh, and a not only an environmental but an economic catastrophe for the people of eastern Ohio and perhaps beyond. Remember, the Ohio River uh, flows just past that town, the Ohio River, obviously, uh, flowing into the Mississippi and, yes. on, and on and through several states. So, um, you know, the, the Ohio Department of Agriculture itself is, is also investigating and they say there's no the risk to livestock remains low, which seems would seem to be belied by the farmers report of their poultry dying, uh, of fish dying. And we've seen the pictures of that as well. And, and they, they say the groundwater tests have not yet done yet, which again, and we saw that gentleman there on, on the street in the community uh, saying uh, it's OK to come back. Uh, oh, and by the way, we're still testing. Right. Uh, so obviously there is a concern there locally that they're putting the cart before the horse uh, and sending people back before they're even sure themselves are authorities whether or not it is a safe environment.
Mike, there's just been so many instances, whether it's first responders after 9-11 being told, go down to the site, it's safe, you know, this mask will protect you, et cetera. And then right. years later, discovering your whole cohort is dying from the same kinds of cancers at young ages. And then only after the fact, getting the kind of compensation, well, people would rather not lose their loved ones in the first instance or have to go through the trauma of those cancer diagnoses. So people have been taught by history not to believe these kinds of claims. And, and to your right. point about the long-term effects of this sort of thing, I mean, so often, unfortunately, what happens when these corporations deal with hazardous materials and there are accidents like these, they're either judgment-proof so that the cost of actually making people whole, the value of all of those lives, the harm to the environment, is so big that it would bankrupt the company, and courts tend to be protective of companies and keeping them in business and not actually making them pay, or they're able to shield themselves from liability or actually having to pay the judgments the way that Chevron has been able to do uh, with that uh, historically large, what was it, $9 billion lawsuit um, that was won uh, for their uh, polluting in the Amazon. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how this shakes up, but we'll definitely have to continue to follow this story because as history has told us, um, right, right. there's no easy resolution to this. Do you have a final yeah, word? Yeah, you know, I just want to mention finally, yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the history shows us, uh, you look at the burn pits legislation and what mm -hmm. happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've spent months covering that uh, and, the, and, and the ill effects that have been suffered by uh, men and women in uniform that have been exposed to those toxic fumes. Look at Flint, mm -hmm. Michigan. Look at Jackson, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, these things tend to, you know, culpability is dodged mm -hmm. uh, and people continue to suffer and the, and the resolutions don't come easily. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Mike. All right. Thank you. We'll have more rising for you right after this.